Nappa is better than you think. It's understandable why so many people think he's bad though. When we don't understand something, we tend to think it's either too strong or too weak. And since Nappa seems to be underrepresented competitively, especially in Japan, it's no wonder he tends to be ranked low so often. But maybe this video can help change that. So what is the point of this video anyway? Well, if you're interested in learning to play or improve your Nappa, I got you covered. And if you're just here to learn what he does so that you can fight against him better, then I got you covered as well. Let's start by quickly running through his pros and his cons. First, his pros. He has incredible damage. He has incredible momentum and setups from many of his hits. And he has incredible meter gain, so long as he converts his hits properly. All of the above things lead to being incredibly consistent at two-touch KOs. He also has incredibly cheap setups, mostly referring to his very practical restand setups. We'll go into those more later. He has meter positive, consistent touch of death combos. He has a fast low light attack, decent overhead options. He can use up to four lows in a single block string. He has fantastic normals with excellent priority. He has a unique key blast, which cleanly beats other key blasts and leads to high reward on hit. And he has easy reflect proof block strings. He even has an armored attack that easily converts into combos, which is applicable in common situations like after a blocked overhead. He also has amazing assists, which are flexible and neutral on offense and in combos. And he has an above average level three knockdown. Overall, he just has lots of room to grow and lots of room to be creative. What about his cons though? Well, he has weak air-to-air -air conversions. He has no spammable key blasts or traditional beam. He lacks a six frame normal, so his fastest is only seven frames. He doesn't have any air supers, but with optimized routes or some meter, this is hardly ever a problem. And he can feel assist dependent for his restand setups and higher damage combos. Let's start by talking about Nappa's neutral. Although Nappa's neutral can feel awkward at times, please keep in mind that his reward for any right decision is significantly higher than almost any other character. From many stray hits, he can get incredible damage, with excellent meter gain that leads into some of the cheapest 50-50 setups in the entire game currently. And this is all in a version of the game where most knockdowns that lead into 50-50s were taken away. This point cannot be stressed enough, and depending on the hit, he might just spark and touch of death your character while gaining meter in the process. Let's start talking about Nappa's tools, beginning with his air options. In general, Nappa has solid air normals. He has a good jump medium and jump heavy for air to ground use. His jump M in particular is useful for cross ups, even at close range. His jump L is pretty solid for air to air use and is surprisingly consistent at hitting super dash, so long as it isn't coming from below. Just be ready to convert with an assist or vanish. Even though Nappa's air normals are considered decent, his air game is widely considered one of his biggest weaknesses, since he has very few unique tools in the air, and he lacks high damage conversions when air to airing opponents. Nappa also has fantastic ground normals. His standing light is a low and reaches very far for a 7 frame normal. Most lows that are this quick don't hit nearly this far. It's a bit unintuitive, but Nappa's crouching light is a mid, and it's 1 frame slower than his standing light. It's not without its uses though, it reaches noticeably further than his already large 5L and it's only minus one on block, which makes it great for challenging in some situations or converting awkward faraway hits, like when he crosses up with his jump M. His auto combo is also surprisingly good. It might not be so good that it's a meme, but it definitely gets the job done sometimes. Speaking of tools so good that they could be memes, Nappa's standing heavy is far, fast and converts excellently, especially if he can reach the corner. Since it smashes the opponent on hit, it doesn't matter if it hits the opponent on the ground or in the air. It's always simple to convert into great damage. And since it's a normal, Nappa can cancel into a special on block to begin offense. While not exactly the same, just imagine Bardock's Lariat comboing on hit, or converting easily into pressure on reaction when blocked. Nappa's 2H is also excellent. It's huge and fast for its size, recovery on whiff is surprisingly quick, and he has multiple cancel options to transition into offense on block if he has an assist available. On to Nappa's Key Blast. Although it appears to have a long windup and lots of whiff recovery, it's still somehow surprisingly good. Its windup has its own hitbox that counts as a physical hit that can't be super dashed through and is an amazing combo starter. Nappa's Key Blast also absorbs other Key Blasts and wins in most of these situations. 
and since Nappa's 5 H reaches so far, he can usually convert these hits into excellent damage and corner carry. Although it feels like a huge risk on Whiff, it's still a strong tool that can be used to challenge grounded attacks while cleanly beating other key blasts. This one tool alone can feel like a saving grace in some matchups. Nappa's Quarter Circle Forward S is a large beam property explosion. It's a true block string and a vanish, which can make it useful for extending pressure. Nappa can change the attack slightly by holding the button, which causes the explosion distance to extend and hit further away. The held version hits almost full screen. This attack can be used in the air and is a nice way to tack on some extra damage when extending with a vanish. Admittedly, this tool feels less practical than most beam attacks. Nappa's Quarter Circle Back S is a multi-hitting armored attack. The armor doesn't kick in frame 1, but it does kick in fast enough to absorb attacks when neither player has a big advantage, like after either player blocks a universal overhead. It converts easily into Jump 2H, his dive attack, it's safe on block, and it's easy to recognize when it has been blocked, which allows Nappa to quickly transition into pressure by using an assist. In general, this armor gives Nappa the ability to challenge even when he's even or slightly negative on block even though he lacks a 6-frame normal. Against other characters who don't have 6-frame attacks, he can even use this after a blocked vanish to fight his way out. Be careful though, the opponent can save themselves with a vanish or reversal if they realize they made contact with the armor fast enough. Let's move on to one of Nappa's most unique tools, the Cybermen. These take a while to come out of the ground after planting, but they are well worth the wait. They come in three variations. Quarter circle back light is green, medium is blue, and the heavy version is brown. Green and blue have their own unique patterns where the Cybermen will use three ordered attacks in a row. The last attack is always the grab explosion that KO'd Yamcha. Both the green and blue dudes are used for optimal combos and can be used for various setups. You'll need to look up combo ideas on Twitter or get creative in training mode to see what works for you. There generally isn't one single correct extension for every set of assists that you might have. Only one little dude can be out at a time, but one can be planted ahead of time and come out once the previous one goes away. The little brown dude costs half a bar and is the most flexible of the bunch. You can dial in different moves for him to do by hitting various buttons as you plant him. Think of it like programming a short set of instructions in a specific order for the little dude to perform once he wakes up from his nap. Hitting the light button will program him to swipe, medium will make him slide, Heavy will make him try to explode, and Key Blast will make him spit a projectile. You'll know that you successfully programmed an attack for the Cybermen when you hear a sharp sound. You can get as creative with this as you want, but the extra flexibility comes with the price of being a bit more confusing. Personally, I don't use this as much as I should, it's definitely worth being creative with. A quick note on Cybermen. Nappa can delay the point where they come out of the ground by holding the button as he plants them. This could potentially be used for getting a specific timing for a setup or combo. Also, Cybermen are not invincible, and they do get hit often. They die in a single hit, but can be very effective in neutral if you cover them well, or manage to get them behind the opponent where they are tough to reach. If you're fighting against Nappa and see a Cyberman coming your way, choose whether you want to attack or just chill out at your own risk. If you don't think you can hit him before he hits you, it's usually best to just block or try to jump away. One final very important note about Cybermen, you have to give them names. It's like a rule or something. A friend of mine told me what he thought they should be called once, and I liked it so much that I used the same names. Meet Jerry, the green one, and his brother, Blairy, the blue one. I don't use the EX one very much, but I really should summon him more, so let's give him a distinguished name. Maybe. Charles. Let's move on to Nappa's offense, which in my opinion is easily one of his greatest strengths. He has fantastic reflect proof strings by canceling into his medium or heavy attacks. Even when he gets reflected, he has no problem reaching the opponent with the next attack before they can try to challenge him. He also has excellent frame traps. Any light into any medium auto frame traps and is an absolutely fantastic starter. If the medium starter doesn't KO, it will probably lead into a restand setup that will force a spark from any opponent who knows what's coming. Pretty much any light, medium, heavy, key blast, or special that Nappa could choose to frame trap with can hurt enough to discourage most people from wanting to risk mashing again. What about Nappa's mix-up though? For starters, he has an excellent cross-up instant air dash with his jump M, which can even reach when air dashing from point blank range. Don't forget to mix in some same side super dashes as well. In the corner, instant air dashes can set up solid high-low mix-up. Be sure to throw in some empty lows as well. 
And in the corner, pairing a super dash and assist together can set up real 50-50 mix-ups into air dash high or empty low. Nappa's version of this is very good since his 5L will reach even when the super dash isn't super close. And of course, don't forget to use universal mix-up tools like Dragon Rush and 6M overheads. Speaking of overheads, Nappa has some unique ones. His quarter circle forward light and medium overheads can combo into mostly unskilled supers for good damage when you need to KO a character. If it won't KO, they both still set up a sliding knockdown which can help give Nappa time to recover his assists. You'll see him commonly end his combos with these attacks. The heavy version is a bit quicker and can be extended with a vanish, an assist, or spark. Keep in mind that EX Overhead does use up Nappa's sliding knockdown for the combo, so you can't end with the sliding knockdown if you started with the overhead. But since Nappa's restand setups and high damage combos don't require a sliding knockdown anyway, this isn't much of a problem. Remember to use Nappa's overheads at times when the opponent is worried about other mix-ups as well, like Dragon Rush or Cross-ups, so that they have more things to look for. The more mix-ups an opponent has to look for, the better each of those mix-ups will be. Now here's a big one. I don't want to spend a huge portion of this video detailing restand setups, but I will show you the most common one that works with many assists. The assist timing varies slightly depending on the assist that you use, but many characters have at least one assist that works to set this up. End a medium-sized combo with Nappa's dive attack, plant a medium Cyberman, and call your assist to fill the gap during the plant animation. Then you just need to light, medium, key blast, both hits, super dash, and finally jump heavy. At this point, you'll notice that Blurry spits on the opponent and drops them on the ground in a standing position. This is why it's called a restand. They were once getting comboed in the air, but now they're forced back into a standing position. This is where the mix-up is. When done at the end of a decently long combo, the combo drops right here, right as the opponent is forced into this standing position, right as Nappa is hovering in the air just above the opponent, hovering in the perfect position to air dash for an overhead attack, and hovering in the perfect position to instead fall onto the ground and go for a low attack. This is the most basic 50-50 mix-up using Nappa's most stable restand setup. And of course, he could also go for a Dragon Rush as well. What's fantastic about this setup is pretty much everything. It costs no meter and only one assist to set up. Every mix-up option does exceptional damage and will 99 times out of 100 lead to a KO'd opponent. It builds tons of meter to do and KOing an opponent this way usually leaves him with a meter surplus. The overhead option doubles as a safe jump, which will beat reversals and supers. The setup is airtight and will body anyone who's trying to jump, mash, or vanish. Successfully reflecting doesn't guarantee an escape from the situation at all because the low option can be used as a reflect proof string, and the Cyberman is also there to follow up if you try to hard tag or challenge in any way right after the successful reflect. Reflecting or sparking the setup at all can be difficult to time, frequently causing the opponent to get hit by the low option when done incorrectly. Even when the opponent guesses correctly, the Cybermen will keep the advantage for Nappa briefly and allow him to continue his pressure. In general, the more someone labs this situation, the more messed up it can feel. Personally, I think it's best to try sparking any time you find yourself in this situation, or at least be willing to guess on the 50-50 high-low instead of throwing your character away by pointlessly trying to jump, mash, or vanish. This restand setup is just one very strong, very practical thing that drastically increases Nappa's reward for anything he does correctly. This is in addition to his already high damage and meter gain. So when I say that Nappa has potentially the highest reward on average per hit in the entire game, I mean it. In Season 2, GT Goku's Spirit Bomb set up a similarly terrifying situation, and that costs 3 bars and usually an assist to set up. But Nappa can do this for 0 meter, and at the low cost of a single assist. He can oftentimes do this during the very first combo of the entire match. If you're curious what assists work for this specific restand setup, I've linked a spreadsheet below, courtesy of Colapsia. By the way, there are plenty of creative ways to set up restands besides what I've shown here, but I don't want to make this whole video about restands. Check out the Nappa hashtag on Twitter for ideas, some of the setups you'll find are really sick, although maybe a bit less consistent to set up and execute. Let's move on to Nappa's supers. One weakness he has as a character is that he lacks air supers altogether, so he'll need to route his combos well to get around this. His level 1 is above average damage, and hits quickly. 
It's excellent for dumping meter to burn through sparking, and it gives us all some insight into what Nappa's favorite number could possibly be. His level 3 is also above average damage, being one of the highest damaging level 3s in the entire game at max scaling. It requires being relatively close to the opponent, so be careful when trying to swap directly into Nappa's level 3 mid-screen. My first time playing Nappa in the Combo Breaker Auction Tourney, I didn't know this wouldn't work. <laughs> This level 3 also has an excellent knockdown, giving him more time to go for mix-ups than other characters. Don't forget to use all of your options, including Instant Air Dash High, Empty Low, Dragon Rush, and Overhead. If you want to get fancy, his level 3 gives him plenty of time to go for Super Jump, Instant Air Dash Float, Overhead, or Fast Fall Low mix-ups, provided that your hand doesn't cramp in the process. Nappa's level 3 has another use as well. Holding the button prevents the full super from happening and allows Nappa to continue with the combo. Be aware that this doesn't work if you already used a launcher or smash in your combo, so it needs to be used early in a combo to have this effect. This can lead to higher damage when successfully used as a reversal and better positioning too. One of the best uses for Nappa's held level 3 is to set up his restands, because he has enough time to plant a Cybermen and keep the combo going. But it gets even better. If you optimize your combo with other characters without using a launcher or smash, you can swap to Nappa and go into a restand setup. Swapping characters this way results in a very quick assist recovery, so you'll almost always have your assists available again to extend with after the restand mix-up hits. This is undoubtedly very strong, but requires a bit more planning to do since you'll need to remember to optimize a combo without using any launchers or smashes. Personally, I'm trying to improve my awareness of when I should be doing this. On to Nappa's assists. His A assist is a quick explosion that loosely tracks your opponent's horizontal range, although it won't quite reach full screen. It has relatively high blocks done, it's easy to convert off of, it's fantastic for setting up pressure if the opponent blocks a key blast and converting if that key blast hits. It's simple and easy to use for combos too, this is generally considered his best, most flexible assist. His B assist has high minimum hit stuns, so it's great for highly optimized combos. It's also fairly quick and actually has armor, so it's great for scrambles and common uses like super dash plus assist. The block stun is a bit lower than the A assist though. And lastly, his C assist. It's a C assist. It has decent block stun and is pretty easy to combo with, but the extra cooldown period and slower startup make it difficult to recommend over his already excellent A and B assists. But what about synergy? Who works well with Nappa, and who does Nappa want on a team in order to be his best? Everyone can use his assists well because they're so flexible in neutral, offense, and in combos. But what does Nappa want? An assist that helps in neutral is always great to have, and it helps that many of these assists also work for his restand setups. Personally, I love using Kid Buu's B assist because it always sets up the perfect height to extend the mid-screen combos, or set up the restand in the corner. It's also a fast, high-priority assist that is generally very flexible and neutral and can be used alongside Super Dash easily. There's plenty of other comparable assists for Nappa to use, but this is one of my favorites. Super high block stun assists are capable of giving Nappa enough time to set up a Cyberman for pressure, although usually he has to give up the ability to restand with that assist in order to do so. You'll need to decide what you want to be able to do with him the most, and then make your decision based off of that. And that's about it. I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to Colapsia for helping me with the script and outline for this video. His Twitter is full of awesome information, videos, and combos, and he's always willing to help people picking up the character. He's been a great resource for both Apology Man and myself, as we have been slowly learning the character. If you're interested in continuing to learn Dragon Ball Fighters and other fighting games, please consider subscribing to the channel or following me over on Twitch to see when I go live. I've actually been pretty consistent streaming lately, so I hope to see many of you over there soon. There's plenty more on the way soon. Thanks for watching.